Yeah, obviously, um, I didn't think that, you know, we put enough time into, um, like, breaking down exactly what we needed to fix and more of just relying on talent and relying on, you know, paper of the guys we had. Uh, I think I said that during, you know, during the time we was down here that, you know, sometimes I think we're just relying on how good we are on paper and not actually, you know, breaking it down and really finding out, you know, what we need to do better, especially during that time being up, you know, a certain amount and uh, being the playoff time and being up, you know, 3-1 and you know, losing two or, you know what I mean, losing three, like, I feel as though we didn't really get that detailed in our adjustments. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Sean Powell from NBA.com. Hey, Marcus. Uh, welcome back. Um, you, uh, your brother was also a free agent this summer, and I just wanted to know how close was it you guys uh, becoming teammates with the Clippers? And also, what, were you, what was your feeling about him winning a championship? Uh, the first one, I don't really want to too much speak on. Um, it, just, it didn't happen. So, you know, he's happy where he's at. And like I said, I'm always rooting for him. And, uh, you know, him winning the championship was, you know, it was amazing for our family. Uh, you know, we, we've been through a lot in, in this league. Um, growing up, you know, that was just an accomplishment for our family as a whole. Being able to take it back to where we, you know, where we grew up and where we're from. And, you know, letting the neighborhood see it, you know what I mean? And, be, and just, you know, giving them hope. And that, was, that was the biggest part, man, of, you know, coming from <clears throat> such a far way to get to the point where we were. I mean, we are now, you know, that was, that was, that was a big, you know, accomplishment for, you know, the Mars family as a whole. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Charlie Widows. Hey, Marcus, welcome back. Um, what did you learn about Ty uh, last year and the time that you were with him? And, and wh why do you think he's so, so well positioned to, to lead this team starting this year? Uh, before I got to the Clippers, me and Ty already had a great relationship. You know, he's been around the league and, you know, he's a face of me. We already had, you know, a really good relationship. And the one thing that I like about him is that he's open to listen to different ideas from the players. He's played the game uh, and, you know, he's played with great players. So uh, I think his, his, his openness to figuring out what, you know, what we also like, I think that's the biggest thing that, you know, I think that he can connect with us and, and you know, a big shot and, you know, the coaching staff is amazing. But I think the biggest thing is being able to connect with the players and understanding the players and, you know, what I mean, talking to the players and not really having that, uh, that ego, rather, you know, he's, he's a, a great coach and not being able to, you know, adjust from what the players say and not just, you know, in his own mind. All right, next we'll go to Cam Buford. Go ahead, Cam. Hey, Marcus, how you doing, sir? Um, I want to talk about motivation. Uh, Ty said the other day that the players need to be motivated. And then I want to ask you about your motivation in, in personal, personally, and then your motivation for the team. Um, I mean, I think Ty definitely hit it on the nose. Uh, so it's a good start. So it's a clean slate for us. Um, obviously, last year didn't do as well as we did, but you know, we on to the next year, and I think guys are very motivated to come back. And you know, I think it hurt to be in up three-one. It's not about the losing; it's about how we lost. And, I think that's the, the biggest motivation for, for this team. And, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, them, that team wasn't back on us. And we all knew that. And, you know, to, to, to be up and to lose, I think that, you know, that put an extra uh, sting in our in our mentality. So now, you know, we got something to go out and prove. And, and uh, I think for the team, I think that's going to be big for us. And me, you know, me, myself, my, my, my motivation has always been high. You know what I mean? I've always came and always put my hard hat, hard hat on and came to work. And, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm appreciative from the Clippers and, you know, that's going to make me play even harder and be more motivated because, you know, they, they, they helped me to take care of my family also. So, uh, you know, I'm very grateful and, you know, I'm going to do everything it takes for, you know, to put my team in the best position. Also, you know, help, help the young guys. Thank you. Next up, we'll go to Farbad. Go ahead, Farbad. Hey, Marcus, I just want to know, you know, what, what went into the decision-making and coming back to the Clippers? How, how did that all go down? Yeah, that's a cool name. Arbonne, that's a cool name. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to say that first. And then secondly, um, it wasn't hard. You know, uh, I, I 
I built a great relationship with, with the guys around here. Uh, Frank is, you know, is, is one of the best presidents that I've, you know, came in contact with. This is my sixth team, and you know, he's by far the best. We've always had great communication. Uh, and then, you know, that's the big, biggest thing for players is, you know, to be able to talk to them like we're growing men, you know, and, and that was the biggest thing is our, our communication has always been on point. Uh, Steve does a great job uh, with this organization, and I've been on six, and it's been the best I've been on, and I'm pretty sure this is the best one in the NBA, you know, and uh, they do a great job with that logo. He does a great job of, you know, of making guys feel wanted and taking care of players, and you know, as a player and that's been around, that's, that's all I can ask for. You know, it's just, you know, the respect level and, uh, you know, make me feel like I wanted it. You know, they did that since day one, since I've been here. So it was, it was an easy, easy choice for me. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Ohm. Go ahead, Ohm. Marcus, congrats on the contract. Um, I was wondering, how, how does the dynamic of the front court change personality-wise and even on the court when you lose Montrez and Jamichael, bring you back though in the physicality, but also add Serge? Uh, you know, I think Serge definitely came and evened it out. Um, you know, Jamichael and Trez is a, is a major you know, factor of this team, but like, it's the next man up, man. Those guys chose the way they wanted to go. Uh, and, you know, we just wanted to beat their ass too. So, you know, we, we all for it. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to go against them. Man. And, uh, you know, kudos to them and their contracts and what they did. But, you know, it's all about the Clippers now. And uh, Serge is going to be a great help for, for us with his versatility and being able to play the five and the four and, you know, being able to help uh, Big Zoo and add some more veteranship to this team with uh, Patum also. You know, we got a lot of veteran guys, guys that have been around the league and, you know, proven guys. So I think, you know, I think it's going to really fit adding to Lou and that mix and, you know, bring it all together. Thank you. Next, we will go to Miriam. Hey, Marcus. Uh, congrats on the deal and, and hope all is well with the baby. Um, welcome. Welcome back. Um, Zubas was saying that you guys, you know, even though things didn't go right in the bubble, that you guys will be better for it because of that experience. Do, do you think that's true and in, in, in which ways? I think it's... Me personally, I, I'm going to throw everything that, that went into the bubble out. Uh, that, was just, that was different, you know, and, and, and we had to really get down to the nitty gritty of it. It was different. It was a different component. It was different, different for everybody. So, you know, the, the way guys took it, the way guys reacted to it was something that we've never seen, something that we've never experienced. So that leading to this year, I don't think that, you know, that plays a major factor in our team. The only thing that I can say that, you know, that hurts the most is being that 3-1. But at the end of the day now, we're, you know, we're back to, you know, playing in our rooms, back to being home and being able to actually, you know, see our families and, you know, get the right recovery and things like that. And I think that a lot of people overlook that, but there's no excuse to think, you know, the Denver team was pretty good. But, you know, being out here now and being in our comfort zone, I think it would be way better. Thanks, Miriam. Next, Andrew Gray. Marcus, welcome back. Um, Congrats on contract. You know, yesterday, Lawrence and Ty were talking about the difference it'll make to have PG and Kawhi available for training camp, which they weren't last year. I know you weren't around for that, but you saw how injuries um, really kept, didn't let this team really get the same lineup together very often. What do you think it'll be like to have those two guys pretty much ready to go at the start? And how, how challenging will it be this year with COVID to really keep that continuity going throughout the year? Um, obviously with those two guys starting from the beginning of the season and having, you know, building that relationship and building that continuity on the court is going to be major for us. And, you know, they're the two right guys. They're, they're very close and we're all very close as a team. And, you know, all this being out there, you know, we all going to have a chip on our shoulder this year. Um, and, you know, the COVID thing, I, I think everybody has to deal with it. So, I, you know, it's, it's more of a just, you know, just over, 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 making sure that, you know, we're doing stuff together, making sure that our chemistry is, you know, is perfect. And I think we got the right coaches and the right guys around to, to make sure that they implement that and make sure that they, everybody knows that that's a major factor of this team. And I think, you know, from being in the league a while and PG, I think it was 11 year and me and K came in the same year. I think we all know that uh, last year, just, you know, you know, it was different things and different components, but uh, we all could put our finger on it, and that's the best thing. So, you know, it's just time to move forward and, you know, get going. 
Thank you. Next up, we'll go to Justin Rousseau. Hey, Marcus, welcome back to the team. Uh, it was reported that you're going to be changing your jersey number for the season to number eight. And I was just wondering if there was any special reason behind choosing that number or anything like that. Uh, you know, I always like the number eight. Um, the reason why I chose 31 last year because I couldn't get 13. And, you know, I just sat back and I was like, yeah, you know, this was a fresh start for me. So I wanted a new number. I wanted to go to eight. And obviously, uh, my brother's 88. So, you know, it kind of you know, corresponds. And, you know, obviously, you know, Kobe and, and things like that. So I just thought it was a special number. It's a lucky number. So, you know, I just wanted to. Okay, we have time for one last question. It will come from Chris Henderson. Congrats on the contract, Marcus. Um, I, I want to ask you real quick, um, with a short off season and getting prepared for this season, I know you got to get your body right and everything. What were some things that you worked on personally for you to get better on the court? Um, hey, man, I, you know, my, my game has always been one, two, three. Uh, you know, just you know, just watching film and just watching, you know, being more balanced and, you know, just working on things with, with my core and, you know, my legs. Yeah, but, you know, playing off K and, and PG, you know, that's, that's going to be easy for me. Being able to be around them this, this half the season and really, you know, get down and see what they like to do on the court. Um, I think it's going to be easy. And also, you know, talking to Ty, man, you know, having a great relationship with him, I think it's going to utilize me more in the offense. I didn't really think that I had a, a real place in the offense when I got here. And even moving into the ball, it was more like just getting where I fit in that. And for any player, that's hard to do. Um, but, you know, just talking to Ty is getting me in the right spots, letting me have the ball in my hand a little more and play, you know, and set those guys up so it would be easier for them. I think that's going to help our team tremendously. And, uh, you know, staying efficient. Uh, you know, that's my game, man, being able to knock the three down and stay efficient.